One teacher went as far to say that Kevin is not a name, it is a diagnosis. <laughs> Welcome back to the Life in Germany YouTube channel and welcome to my bed. This is now going to be my humble abode for the next three to four months because if you were following along with my previous videos, well, I am actually stuck here on bed rest due to some pregnancy complications that had me in a hospital for just about a week in May and it's been really tough, but I'm trying to get through it um, mentally and physically. And I thought I would create some lighthearted content for you guys to talk about some of the things that I've had to go through and some of the topics that we've been discussing, which of course, one of those being baby names. And naming your baby in Germany, guys, let me tell you, is a heck of a lot harder than naming your baby in Canada. So before I dive right into it, if you are planning on moving to Germany yourself, well, I also have a ton of other videos here on this channel that you can check out that will help you get started when moving here to Germany. I also have a freebie checklist that gives you a step-by-step -step process on how to get started here and how you can save a lot of money doing so. So you can check that out if you'd like, but I want to start you guys off with a little story. So the whole inspiration behind creating this video is because when we were naming my son back in 2018 we were sitting in the backyard at the dinner table with my German family and also with my Canadian family who was visiting now we started talking about right away baby names and and what would be the best fit for my baby boy that was due in September 2018 and this became a really heated debate midway through everything goes silent and my sister-in-law says well I mean at least we already know you're definitely not naming your kid Kevin <laughs> And my uncle Kevin was sitting at the table and she totally forgot and didn't put two and two together that my uncle's name was indeed Kevin. Now I had no idea what she meant by this. I thought Kevin is a nice name. Like we have a lot of Kevins in Canada. I guess as a Canadian, I didn't really know that there was good names and bad names. I mean, for sure, like in Canada, maybe if we think about trashy names, we might think of names that are maybe a little bit more, I don't know, people like to say, more hick, like more hillbilly maybe. I don't know, like Bob or Billy or Harry perhaps. But even then I know a lot of Bobs, Billies and Harrys in Canada and they're never made fun of or considered trashy. It's just maybe a little bit more of a hillbilly name than some of the other names we have in Canada. I don't know, man. It is just a lot easier to name your kids in Canada than it is here in Germany. And of course, I have a German husband, which makes things 10 times harder because we disagree on just about every name there is. So as the debate went on, it turns out that Kevin is not the only super trashy name to name your kid here in Germany. There are others that are very unpopular, including Jacqueline, Chantel, Mandy, Cindy, Ryan, Brian, maybe even Justin or Mike. And funny enough, it wasn't just my family who mentioned that these names can be considered to be rather trashy here in Germany, but HuffPost actually also put together an article explaining why names such as Kevin are an absolute no-go here in Germany. And my husband then went on to add that there are other names that are an absolute no-go because I was bringing up really nice names like Landon or Brayden or Hayden or Cole or Jaden or Hunter and every single time it was like, no, 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 no. For girls, you've got like Danielle or Melissa or Sarah or Amanda and these are very, very common names in Canada that are also quite popular that are just apparently an absolute no-go here in Germany. And unfortunately, apparently it is not just the friends or the kids on the playground that might make fun of you if you have a name like this. There is actually proof that socially teachers might grade you a bit more difficultly, that you might be less respected by teachers or of course in the professional world. So there's actually a lot more to it than you might think than just a few kids picking on you on the playground. Apparently, even social workers under the table have actually used the name Kevin as a term to say, well, he's a real Kevin. 
And that to me was like, what? But to all my German friends and family, it made so much sense, which can be really, really confusing when you grow up not really realizing that names themselves might have a positive or negative connotation in other countries. Now I tried to figure out why that might be here in Germany and why this is not the case in Canada. And it seems to be that for the most part, these names are considered white trash because they tend to be names that come from lower income families and lesser educated people here in Germany. To me, that seems really unfair and obviously a little bit offensive because not only are these particular names like Kevin and Brian and Cindy and Chantel totally normal names in Canada, but I've never heard of a name having a negative con connotation in my life. So on the one hand, yes, it's really sad that this is something that exists here in Germany, but on the other hand, when you're naming your child, you probably do need to keep these things into consideration because at the end of the day, you really don't want them having to have a tough time living here in Germany simply because they have a name like Kevin. There were even websites like Freakonomics, I will leave a link down below, who stated that they actually found a survey here in Germany where they questioned over 2,000 teachers here asking them about particular names. And one teacher went as far to say that Kevin is not a name, it is a diagnosis. <laughs> And if that doesn't make things hard enough for you guys trying to pick your beautiful German baby names right now, it gets even harder here in Germany because there are actually laws around naming your kid particular things. In North America, we like to get creative and call our kids things like Apple or Southwest or North. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And we think that these are super cool, but in Germany, there are many, many laws and rules against what you can and cannot name your child. Typically, no last names, like the most common one, Schmidt. Has anybody ever seen the American comedy New Girl? Like her roommate's name is Schmidt. And I always thought that was totally normal, but apparently in Germany, that is very much and very strictly a last name and cannot be a first name of any child. You can also not name your child a product, like, I don't know, McDonald's, or even a sports team like Borussia, where somebody actually got turned down who wanted to name their daughter Borussia. You cannot name your child after an object, I don't know, chair or computer, <laughs> perhaps. And you can also not name your kids after anybody who might be evil, for example. I don't think naming your kid Adolf Hitler anywhere in the world would be acceptable, but certainly not here in Germany, including other crazy ones like Lord or Darth Vader. These things just won't fly here in Germany. The one thing that I do understand is that there is also a big rule that you are not allowed to name your child here in Germany anything that will potentially humiliate them in the future. So they are typically very strict with this and maybe you wanted to name your kid something super creative without realizing that it meant something else in French or Spanish or Latin or what have you. So it could actually help you in the long run if you had no idea that it actually had a negative connotation in a different language. That I think is pretty cool. One thing that I'm glad changed recently, I believe back in 2008, was that Germany didn't allow gender neutral names, which nowadays Come on guys, like the best name you can have is a gender neutral name. So I'm really thankful for that as well. I think that we're really getting onto the right path here in Germany, but it is, it's really, really hard to find a name that works for both myself and for my husband because there are so many negative connotations around certain North American names that can be quite popular back home for me. But let's put the pause button on all of these bad names here in Germany and talk about some of the best names. Well, I actually have to say that in recent years, probably in the last two to three years, our top 10 lists in Canada and our top 10 lists here in Germany are really starting to link up. I checked numerous different websites and most of them are pretty much the exact same in terms of the list of top 10 names. But I was on one website that I really like, which is nameberry.com and their top 10 names for 2021 were Matteo, Noah, Leon, Finn, Elias, and then for the girls, Emilia, Hannah, Mia, Emma, and Sophia. So these are really like world renowned. They work everywhere. I think every single one of them is super international, which is really, really nice. Makes baby naming a lot easier nowadays. So I'm really, really thankful. The Canada list and the America list is pretty much identical to this list here in Germany. But in all fairness, the reason that we're having such a difficult time is not because 
my husband is saying no, no, no to all of the names that I suggest that are popular in Canada, but also because, guys, there's some German names that just really wouldn't fly in Canada. Not because they're considered white trash or they have some sort of negative connotation, simply because they are just super German. Super German. Now, I'm actually going to talk about my same sister-in-law who I mentioned earlier. Her name is Nora. Now, Nora, for me, in Canada, seemed like a really, you know, Alte Omi name, you know, like a grandmother's name. And I don't think anybody would name their kid Nora nowadays in Canada until I moved to Germany and I only met drop-dead gorgeous Noras here in Germany. They were all beautiful. I don't know if it was just like what happened or if that's a thing here in Germany, but everybody I knew who was named Nora was absolutely gorgeous. So then nowadays, when I think of the name Nora, I think, oh, you, that would be such a cute girl's thing because I only know beautiful Noras. <laughs> So things can change for sure, but there are names in Germany that are still common for sure. I'm gonna give you a few names and I personally know somebody in Germany with each and every single one of these names. Maybe not my age or maybe not being born today or last year, but that are still very much alive here in Germany. So let me get my laptop. I've written it down for you. Names like Astrid, Nora, Frieda, Marie, Louis, Paul, Klaus, Manfred, Helmut, Hans, Holger, Jürgen, Ingrid, Susanne, Heike, Elke, Siegfried, Jutta, Gertrude, Bernhard, Jörg, Ulrich, Jens, Siegfried, Sylvia, Cornelia, Bettina. That is not to say, I'm not making fun of every single person I just named. You're probably just like, Jenna, like stabbed through the heart. Thanks for being so rude and hating on my name. It's not that I don't like these names. It's just these names could be considered extremely German if I was naming my son or my daughter one of these names and then told my Canadian family back home this is what I was going to name my kid. They'd all just be like, really? Okay, now you're really German, Jenna. So again, don't be offended. I'm not saying that these are necessarily bad names and I'm sorry if your name is Kevin, guys, because apparently that just does not fly here in Germany. So why did I create this whole video today? Well, of course, we are in the process of picking baby names and I am really, really excited to be able to officially announce our gender reveal. I'm not gonna make this very exciting because I didn't come up with any creative ideas while I've spent the last week in the hospital. So I can tell you my pregnancy has not been a breeze. I've been extremely nauseous, but for the most part, it's been eins zu eins, like one to one, exactly the same as my first pregnancy. But for some reason, from the get go, I always said I could never imagine myself giving birth to a girl. I always dreamt of having a girl, but I just never trusted my body to be able to host a girl. I don't know if that makes any sense. So here I was being like, yes, it's 100% a boy. And then once I started getting sick, I was sick, but I was just like, it was different. And my belly was hurting in a different way. And my leg hair wasn't growing. And I, I didn't feel as good, you know, as sexy as I did in my first pregnancy. And I was thinking, you know what? I think I'm gonna change my mind here. And so probably after five or six weeks, like really early on in the pregnancy, I said, no, it's a girl. It's definitely a girl. So what do you guys think? I'm not gonna make you wait much longer anymore. Of course, it's way more exciting for me, obviously, than it would be for you. And at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? I really don't care if it's a boy or a girl. Obviously, I just wanted to be healthy, but I was so excited about the thought of having a girl, but having a boy is also really cool, like, because I already have one and they would be like best buds, you know? Like, there's just so many pros to both. So I am having a girl. Oh. And I'm officially telling you guys that now because it has been confirmed by two different doctors from two different establishments. So hopefully we have it right. I've actually gone through a lot of my clothes, a lot of my son's clothes and gotten rid of some of the older stuff, but it gives me a little bit of an excuse to be able to shop a tiny bit, right? Girls clothes are so much cuter in Germany than boys clothes. So this is like my secret obsession right now. Though I haven't bought anything. I know it's too early, I am only 22 weeks pregnant and things have not been the easiest for me. So right now, all I can do is keep my fingers crossed, pray for the best and hope that this little baby girl stays in my belly as long as possible. 
So thankfully for me, because it's a girl, girls' names were a lot easier for my husband and I to decide on. We still do not have a boy's name. I'm still not 100% sold on my son's name. His name is Max. I love the name Max, but every other kid in Germany's name is Max. <laughs> Every other kid in Nikita, you've got Max D, you've got Max S, you've got Max N. So as much as I would have loved to pick a unique name that had have worked for both of us, that was also internationally friendly, it just wasn't gonna happen. So Max it was. And now we have a girl's name. My husband's not 100% set on it, but I've pretty much put my foot down now and said, okay, I've had to go through so much in my first pregnancy so much in my second pregnancy. I'm tired of being at the hospital. I'm tired of being poked and prodded down there and injected and phew, I'm picking the name, guys. <laughs> it's final and I love the name. I'm really excited. I'm not gonna share it with you guys just yet. I am going to wait until my beautiful baby girl graces you guys with her presence to let you know exactly what name I chose. But I would be really interested to hear what names you guys love or what you would absolutely not name your kid. Are there names from your countries that you think are considered to be white trash? Like, am I the only one that was so like blindsided by the fact that there's actually negative connotations to certain names or I'm curious. <laughs> Anyway, this is a conversation up for debate that will last absolutely forever, I'm sure. But thank you so much, guys, for always following along. I really appreciate it, especially during these times where I'm stuck in bed and I have nobody to talk to except for you guys on my camera. So maybe I should consider doing some live videos <laughs> eventually. I'm so, so thankful to have you all. And again, vielen, vielen lieben Dank und wie immer, bis später.